Which player has the greatest defensive season over the past 25 years? A very heavy question with no real definitive answer. Because a question like this is no different than asking what's your favorite food? That's because it's an opinion. And changes drastically from person to person depending on your view of the game. How much do you value interceptions or sacks or even defensive touchdowns? A question so simple that can become very complex very quickly. Well, instead of basing this question on opinion, what if we could find the answer out using math? What if we put a value to each defensive statistic, add up the total number of X player in Y year and find their defensive score? Well, that's exactly what I've done in this video. I found the 25 best defensive seasons over the past 25 years and gave them a defensive score based on the numbers each player had in such year. Now you may be asking yourself, why did I only go back 25 years? Well, a lot of statistics we look at as normal in today's game haven't been tracked for very long. 1982 is when the NFL first began tracking sacks. 94 was the first season of solo tackles being officially recorded. And in 1999 is when passes defended and tackles for loss finally became an official stat in the NFL. So trying to find numbers for players pre-1990 is very challenging and basically impossible. So with all that being said, let's go over my own value I've attached to each significant statistic. A tackle is worth 0.1, sack worth 1.5, interception at 2 even, force fumble and passes defended worth 1.5, and a TFL is worth 1. The award section is 5 points for winning Defensive Player of the Year and 2 points for making First Team All-Pro, while also being rewarded points for MVP votes. I landed on these being the value for each statistic based on difficulty and also making it an even playing field for all three levels of defense to have a chance at getting on this list. But the most difficult thing about this video was trying to not make this ranking strictly on performance numbers, because not every stat is the same. Not every interception is the same, sack the same, or even tackle the same. But as I mentioned, finding advanced stats becomes even more difficult when trying to go back 25 years. Advanced numbers like pressures, pass rush win rate, and coverage grades all became recorded in the 2000s to 2010s. But I did find one statistic to help differentiate a great player from a good player even if they have similar numbers. And it's called approximate value. This stat was created by Pro Football Reference founder Doug Dreenan, and this is a method to attach a single number on the seasonal value of a player at any position from any year. He also described that AV is not meant to be an all-end metric. He states, if one player is a 16 and another is a 14, we can't be very confident that 16 AV player had a better season than the 14 AV player. But I am very confident that the collection of all players with an AV of 16 is better as an entire group than the collection of players with a 14 AV. So every player in this video will have their approximate value be added on to their defensive score to find our total number for that season. So with our grading system out the way, let's take a look at the top 25 players in defensive score since 1999. With these scores ranging from 2020 TJ Watt at 88.3 points all the way to Charles Woodson in 2009 at 107.4 points. And you'll notice some of these scores are a different color than the rest. That's because these specific scores are attached to players who have had a top 25 defensive score but did not win Defensive Player of the Year in that same season. Our 25th highest score in TJ Watt came in second place in 2020 to Aaron Donald with very close numbers. TJ Watt had more tackles, sacks, TFLs, and passes defended, while Donald had more forced fumbles and approximate value with a score of 24. And even though TJ had a higher defensive score, this AV by Aaron Donald with a score of 24 is not only just a ridiculous number, it is literally the highest AV by a defensive player in NFL history. So this defensive player of the year might not have been such a robbery as it looks. Although TJ finds himself on this list once again, having one of the greatest defensive scores in NFL history and wasn't rewarded for defensive player of the year. And this time, I think we can all agree, this might be the definition of a robbery. This past season, TJ Watt finished in second place for Defensive Player of the Year, similar to 2020, but I can't even wrap my mind around a gap this big between first and second place. Here is TJ Watt's numbers from this past season along with his defensive score, coming in second place to obviously Miles Garrett, who finished this season with over 20 points less than TJ Watt. 
Watt had more tackles, sacks, interceptions, passes defended, tackles for loss, and even had a defensive touchdown. TJ Watt has a real argument to be a three-time defensive player of the year, and this doesn't even include his 2019 season that just barely missed this list. And when we take a further deep dive in this list, we have so many more players who didn't win Defensive Player of the Year with a top 25 score. Like 2013 Robert Quinn, who wasn't even top three in voting. Or Champ Bailey's ridiculous two-year stretch from 05 to 06 that didn't result in an award. And even Jerron Curse, who had a real argument to win Defensive Player of the Year as a rookie, which has only been done once in NFL history by the great Lawrence Taylor. But one of the most intriguing parts about this list is we have so many years where there were two players who had top 25 finishes in the same season. Like in 2002, where Derek Brooks slightly edged out Jason Taylor to win the Defensive Player of the Year, having a defensive score 2.1 points better. And with numbers like this, I think it's safe to say he definitely deserved it. Or in 08, when James Harrison and Demarcus Ware had a Defensive Player of the Year race for the ages. Combining for 36 sacks, 13 forced fumbles, and 43 tackles for loss. And even though Ware slightly had him beat in defensive score, either of these players deserve this award, rightfully so. But I think my favorite duo from a year is one that we're not used to seeing much when it comes to the Depoy race. Because in 2009, the Defensive Player of the Year winner and runner-up were both cornerbacks. Darrell Revis and Charles Woodson gave us one of the most entertaining Defensive Player of the Year battles we have seen in NFL history. Two corners dominating the game in different ways. A shutdown corner versus a turnover machine corner. Charles Woodson had nine interceptions that had three results in touchdowns while also having four forced fumbles. And Darrell Revis put up 31 passes defended, an NFL record, while also putting up performances like this going up against some of the greatest wide receivers in the NFL. And even with both of these players having all-time seasons, Woodson simply had the better season. And not only do the numbers back that up, but Charles Woodson's defensive score is the literal highest score over the past 25 seasons with a 107.4 score with Darrell Revis being at a respectable 95.9. And you'll see with Woodson's score, it barely edges out J.J. Watt's incredible season in 2015, where he put up 76 tackles, 17.5 sacks, and 29 tackles for loss. Now I know what you're asking yourself after seeing this, because no way J.J. Watt only has one season on the top 25. Surely his 2014 and 2012 season have to be on here somewhere. And I tell you, you're right. I just wanted all the other players to have some shine and not feel embarrassed. Because J.J. Watt's 2012 and 2014 season are not only the two best defensive seasons over the past 25 years, they might be the two greatest defensive seasons of all time. The gap between number 25 and number 3 on this list is 19.1. The gap between number 3 and number 2 on this list is 26.1. JJ's first two Defensive Player of the Year seasons were so dominating, these numbers don't even look real. 41 combined sacks, the only player in NFL history with multiple 20 plus sack seasons. 68 tackles for loss, while also setting the record for most in a season with 39. 26 passes defended and two defensive scores, and even finished second in MVP as a defensive player. I know everyone has their own opinions on all the GOAT debates in football, whether that's the wide receiver debate or running backs or whatever it may be, but when it comes to a defensive player, in my mind, there is no other player better in history than Justin James Watt. I remember being a 10 and 12 year old kid who just recently started getting into the NFL and I would literally go out of my way to watch Texans games just to watch JJ Watt. And these are not the Texans we know from recent years with Deshaun Watson and CJ Stroud. During the 2000s, the Texans were one of the laughing stocks of the entire NFL. And little old me would go out of my way to sit through Matt Schaub and Ryan Fitzpatrick all so I could watch 99 play defense. I know there have been countless dominant defensive players in NFL history. Lawrence Taylor, Reggie White, Bruce Smith, this list could go on and on. And obviously, I never watched any of those guys. But I find it hard to believe we will ever see another player in NFL history replicate those three years from J.J. Watt ever again. I had a lot of fun making this video, and I hope everyone who watched this learned something and also enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. I'm out. Peace.